Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noting. Um, today it's gonna be like a special video. It's a I make over like uh, 100 videos, uh, so this is could be like my like like a pit break or like a pit stop kind of uh, video. I'm just gonna maybe talk a little bit, but I will also talk a little bit later uh, in about spread chalk and how to organize um, the notes tree that you might have collected. Um, and maybe it talks about some of the templates um, that Spread Chalk offers. Um, yeah, today actually um, it marks the, there's a new Blender version 2.78a. So if uh, this is the first time you 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 are, you are using Blender, um, you are very lucky. This version is uh, the most stable and it has a lot of uh, features and and it's um it's a free it's open source 3D tools it's a uh, it's definitely the best tools you can have to do 3d um, um, compared to other 3d tools like Maya Houdini cinema 4d I don't know whatever um, other licensed software that's uh, used commercially with blender it's uh, you have uh, total creative freedom and you don't need to like worry about um, the version changes and thinking about the upgrade and gonna cost you a lot of money with Blender, there is always like a work in progress, and if you find out bugs, you can report it. Um, I like that kind of uh, um, kind of uh, progressive kind of uh, tools. Um, yeah, it, with my life noting, um, you might uh, actually can tell already that I'm using a lot of nodes mostly, and mostly using animation nodes and spreadsheet. But I also use um, some of the Blender features that. Uh, that's actually using nodes such as this uh, cycles uh, render engine for the materials you can use nodes to generate procedural materials or um, like a shader um, some part of uh, um, other part of blender like um, compositing also use nodes but blender has a lot of features that I, I really like um, they are all getting much better over five year five years that I've been um, following Blender and updating its release. It's a uh, it's always like a it's a nice surprise. Um, yeah, so in this uh, live noting, so I will I will kind of start from scratch. Just imagine if I'm like a, if I'm a Blender artist and I want to know more about uh, noting using animation nodes and spread chalk. You download Blender, and for for Mac versions, usually I keep like a I keep them in a zip in the folder. Um, um, if you click on the download Blender, you download first of all you download Blender, okay? Because um, animation nodes and spread chokes are not part of the like official um, add-on, so it's a it's a something else that I will show you how to do uh, how to download and how to install. So Blender 2.78 for Windows or Mac or Linux. Uh, I'm using Mac OS, uh, so I download it from here, and it comes as a zip. If it's for Windows, you can use the installer or the zip. I recommend you to just use the zip. I used to use the installer all the time, but the zip is actually uh, much better. It's a modular. You can um, copy paste the zip into into USB, and you can use it in in, in any computer anywhere. In any machine, so uh, I, I already downloaded my uh, Mac OS Blender version 2.78a, and this is how it looks. And instead of double clicking on the app, I will show the package content and I will click inside uh, this uh, like a terminal execution. So it runs the terminal and runs Blender, so so this is a a better way to do to run Blender, I think, because you can always kind of uh, easily close it, or you can find a like a message if it's if we are using animation nodes or spread chalk. Sometimes you want to see like the message in the terminal. Okay, so this is Blender. Um, we don't have animation nodes and spread chalk yet, so I will download it from github 
GitHub is um, used by a lot of developers and to share um, their um, kind of works and projects like a work in progress tools that they want to share with people and to get feedback. It's a I'm not a programmer myself, but I learned to like GitHub and I think it's really really nice uh, a um, nice place to to store your codes and then share it with uh, uh, with people on uh, anywhere on the internet with access to internet okay um, with github we can search um, search off for example I'm gonna download uh, the latest version and the way you do it um, whenever you are in a github in a like let's say you are in a spray chalk and you want to download it you just click on the clone or download and usually it's gonna give you the option uh, download as zip okay we're gonna do that okay it's gonna download the thingy by default the Mac will always decompress the zip file so I need to recompress it back that's okay I'll also I'll also download a uh, animation nodes um, the latest is actually the work in progress one is version 1.7 I will download the latest official version um, 1.6 I think animation nodes so let's where is animation nodes okay animation nodes oh I need to go back to github animation nodes Let's do the same, just download the zip. And normally this is how you um, you would find, um, you will find like a lot of um, Blender add-on and they all come in a in a zip usually. Sometimes it comes in a, just like a single Python file, um, but mostly it comes as, as a zip. Um, by the way, if you're, if you're just studying in like using 3D and whether you want to use it to make your own artwork um, for games or for animation or to do like a film visual effects or maybe for for printing whatever uh, recent I think it's a good idea if you're starting with Blender to have a book have one book like really good books about Blender and also you I recommend you to read books like uh, this uh, the art of 3D computer animation and effects. Um, just flip through it and then read the whole book. So maybe I think the book is like over 400 pages, but it's really worth uh, looking at this book and understand all the concepts and try to find the uh, how you do it inside Blender. So normally um, you use 3D for modeling, for animations, or to do like visual effects like doing particles and stuff so that's a uh, one thing I before I forgot and another thing is uh, for most of my live noting actually for inspirations um, I don't always have like a like a uh, like ideas but I try I try to come up with new ideas all the time um, my work is kind of like um, between a little bit of art and a little bit of design, sometimes just um, te technical geekiness, you know. Like um, I'm actually a big fan of this guy. Um, not a not a guy. I mean, this professor John Maeda. He used to teach at MIT. I don't know what he's doing at the moment, but he's uh, one of uh, my inspiration. His works involve a lot of um, computer art works. But I also uh, a big fan of his philosophy and design principles. Um, very interesting person. Uh, you can watch his talk at TED, um, and also he has uh, published some books about um, himself and his art. He's a very uh, very interesting person. I, I wish he's uh, uh, one of my professor back in the uni. But anyway. Uh, and I also find a lot of 
works that ins uh, give me inspiration um, created using processing. Processing is another um, like a tool, like an open source open source tool for you to kind of co use code to create like a visuals. Processing is really really powerful, um, and over the years it has uh, become it has improved and. Uh, used to be written in Java. Now you can also do processing in JavaScript and publish your work as a, like a piece of code for a website. Um, processing is really powerful, and yeah, I found kind of I like those tools, and then I want to do the same using Blender and Nodes. I like Nodes, so. Um, like John Maida said, uh, you don't think, ju just do. It's just like, uh, I think Bruce Lee also said the same thing. But anyway, uh, I think I downloaded the animation notes and Spreadshock, Spreadshock Master 2. So I have another folder already with Spreadshock in it. Um, this should be the latest. Spreadshock. Oh, where's the other folder? Mm. Anyway, this is the latest. I will copy this. Put it on my desktop. Sorry if I'm doing it really, really slowly, but if you uh, hopefully you can follow this anyway if you you can like fast forward the YouTube video if you want if I, if I talk really slowly just uh just bear in mind um, where where's that folder I'll go to the desktop and find a spread joke master okay there you go I'm gonna compress this so I'll make a zip out of it and then uh, there's also animation nodes okay animation node master right click and compress so I zip those folders back okay now we should have the zip ready for us to install the add-on so I'm not gonna assume that you can um, install the add-on yourself if you want to do blender actually if I'm doing live noting it's not like fully blender but I'm actually it's kind of like a 60% Blender and the rest is animation nodes or Spreadshop. So you still need to understand Blender if you want to do the, the node stuff. Okay, so install from file. Let's go to the desktop. Desktop. Let's find the zip. So Spreadshop Master, install from file, and turn this on. And I'm gonna save user settings. There are other um, Spreadshop um, kind of a system setting like uh, show the big button and apply theme and the heat map is useful if you want. If you have like a big node and you want to know which node is slow, which node is fast, um, heat map is good for that. So I install Spreadshop. I will also install animation nodes um, just in case. Animation nodes master. I think that's the one. And now both of them are working. Um, there is this note from Spreadshop developer that um, 
maybe using animation nodes and spread choke at the same time are not always a good idea. It might cause crashing. But I will run both of them anyway. Um, sometimes maybe it's a good idea to just use one of them. Um, depends what you want to work on. So now switch to compositing. This is where I usually do all my live noting works. Um, we have an empty 3D scene here and here for rendering or normally it's become just a text editor. So I'm gonna save this. This is like a uh, live noting bit stop. I'm just gonna talk, you know. Um, can switch to spread chop or animation nodes. This is spread chop, and I will going to show you the some of the templates um, they have. Oh, with spread chop, there's a cool thing here. Um, you can always check for new versions and it will tell you if you have the latest version or not okay it tell you up there you have the latest version point zero point five six seven is latest okay that's cool all right um this is what i want to talk today basically kind of like a way um to organize the the node tree we know that uh with blender the blend file itself is like a like a folder um, directories. It's like it has a um, like some data directory structures inside it. So whenever you file and append um, a blend files, you should be able to kind of grab and um, import the any kind of nodes tree, whether it's created using animation nodes or Spreadshop. However, with Spreadshop there is like a special um, kind of a way to store your codes. Um, it's called this. Uh, it's just SV import and export. Basically, it's exporting this uh, JSON JSON kind of file that you can import to to get all the nodes. Uh, I'll show you one of um, example that I have. Um, I have like over a hundred. Offer maybe over thousands of uh, blend files just um, that I collected over times while learning and exploring animation nodes and spreadshop. So over thousand blend files, and I definitely um, got lost some at some point. Uh, there's they are somewhere in in my folders, but I think I will start to get organized with a uh, with a node tree um, and to create templates like this. So this is some of the examples from Spreadshop developers. Like, um, pet, uh, like let's try this uh, petal egg example. It's a, it's a JSON file that, um, this is like a special um, template uh, options you can get from this list or you can import it from your own uh, so which one should I do first? Uh, maybe stretch up example first. Get a template. Um, the dancing notes is a funny one. You can give that a try. I want to try the spiral. Okay, there you go. It's a. It generates the note for you. It's a, and it's a. Some of the notes are already. Uh, organized as well frame nicely sometimes it comes with a like documentation so it's really nice let's see what we got here some formula and and we have this for that's the vertices the edges and the matrix so we, we should have something in the 3d scene so we have like a Something that looks like a like a wave. Um, let's see if we play around with the with the parameter here. Okay, that's controlling the the scale. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the scale. That's a that's for the transformation metric. Probably the more interesting one is uh, this guy. 
so so that's kind of giving you more points Just controlling the step and this controls the edges. But this is one of the one of those example. Anyway, it's not uh, important. You, uh, you can check all every one of this uh, template and try to understand how uh, what they do, uh, what function they do, and how. Maybe recreate it yourself, and maybe by that by doing that you you have uh, some ideas of spreadsheet. Same thing with animation nodes. You have templates here. Let's create a new node tree. We have template here, like uh, which one? Three D grid. Three um, D grid simply generate like a three D grid, obviously. Okay, with animation nodes, it tends to slow down because of this uh, continuously calculating turn that off and just turn this tree so this guy will create 3d grid kind of like an array of um, cube um, instances for this we need to have an object in the scene let's create a um, just a donut grab the donut and we have now an array of donuts here and we can play around with the distance and the number of uh, donut stacks like that so that's a um, that's animation nodes um, template and I also just show you the spreadsheet kind of templates which is a uh, basically a uh, Load it from this uh, JSON stuff. If we want to um, save our own, I'll, I'll show you to you real soon. So back to compositing, back to spreadsheet, new node tree. I will I will load one of the example that I did earlier. Um, I happen I happen to save some of the the node tree setup. Um, in the previous live noting so let's um, we can actually do it um, in the, in uh, multiple ways first of all we can save it in the in the in the GIS here GIS is like a um, it's like github but it's for you to save like a snippet of code and even though I'm not a, like a programmer I I, I started to use this uh, GIS this guy gis gis dot github dot com. I don't know what gis stands for, but it's like a snippet you can save. Um, let me let me load one. So sv stack objects at sv place objects on ground zero. I think I will use the stack objects. And this is a this is a, the JSON for spreadsheet. The JSON code looks like this. It's just like a um, how can I? Uh, it's kind of like a dictionary. I think it's a structure. But by loading this, it's it's gonna generate the node tree for you. That's a, I think it's really really nice. I wish that animation nodes have this kind of feature as well. So this is the code that I copy and paste into Gits. In order to get this um, node tree, um, I, we can just use this. Uh, just grab this ID. It's really long, but just copy that and then back to Spreadshop. Enter the GIS ID there. Enter and import. Now it's importing the code, and Spreadshop's gonna take the code and gonna recreate this uh, node tree for us. So that's really really nice. And sometimes if you want to do it like really quickly if you want to share, share it with your friends that um, that are, are you uh, using spreadsheet you can simply click on the export to GIS and or save the blend as zip um, if you s click on the export to GIS it's gonna save the code somewhere in the, in the in the GIS and you will get this link of the snippet of code but now I'm just gonna 
investigate this uh, JSON, this um, stretch of node tree. Um, there is like an error here. Dep depreciated node. Okay. So apparently we have a new object in MK2. So this is um, this is something that you also need to be aware of with uh, animation nodes or spread chalk because um, it's like a work in progress all the time some nodes might get improved and you have older nodes and the newer node and sometimes you have like this node 3 and it might not work with a certain version with the newer versions the nodes might have changed so it's a good idea to kind of keep everything modular Keep a Blender version X and then Spreadshop version X and keep that in one folder. But anyway, um, over time this is gonna um, you uh, so with Spreadshop I think the older node will still work anyway uh, most of the time. So let me try using the old node. So I should have some objects in the scene. I think this is the code that. Uh, the code for stacking objects. So I'll just have a bunch of uh, 3D objects like that. One, two, three, four. And now we'll get, get selection. And let's have a look. Seems to be not doing anything get selection I will so I'll recreate the connection I guess depreciated node hmm. so start from that one and that one and the polygon goes directly to that guy. I think that's pretty much it. Now, okay, we have the setup. So that's the um, from the stacking example. Now we have our setup ready. I can turn on the shading and bake it. Here it goes, you know, four objects being stacked. This is um def definitely a, like a good um, exercise that I did during the older live noting. It's not probably in, in order to improve this, maybe uh, kind of need a way to transform these objects into this position. But the easiest way is to maybe if I'm manually doing it, so select this object. Okay, that's the uh, transform. Just copy that, paste that in, zero it out. You know, you get that object in the same place. Same thing with the rest of this object. Basically, what matters is the, the Z axis. So this um, this definitely can be um, we can use animation nodes to do this so just get the Z and zero out everything else and now they're all in place so that's a that's the object stacking if you want um, you can get the codes by just copying this number um, I probably should uh, post it um, in my blog, Blender Sushi blog, um, so you can always uh, just simply get this uh, JSON and import it into Spreadshop. So yeah, that's um, I think that should cover most of things I want to talk about today. So it's a uh, basically I wanna. I kind of like refreshing the whole thing and I'm showing you um, like a way uh, you want to save so you always uh, you still save the blend files but save also the the JSON file if it's uh, if you are using Spreadshop 
Um, let's try something. Let's create a. Let's create a something in Scratch Up. That's a new file save as live loading. Let's grab the object objects in. Um, if you actually, um, if you are tired with uh, those, uh, the default geometry here, there is the this extra objects that you can download and that you can um, can turn on. There's an add curve extra objects and add mesh extra objects. Mesh is for polygons and this is for curve. They are both uh, pretty cool. Have a look inside. It's like. Uh, there's a bunch of um, extra objects. I think it's like there are maybe 100 extra objects. Let's have a look uh, real quick. This can be like um, can be like ins inspirations for procedural modeling actually. So of course you have the um, the default primitive like plane, you know, plane, cube, circle, cylinder, cone. Taurus, the monkey, and you can change the parameter. But you also have the extra objects. If you shift A, you see now you have a lot more. Um, there is like a twisted torus. Looks like that, and you can adjust it. It's really really cool. And you can then use the modifier. Maybe uh, wireframe. So there's a cool looking uh, torus. There are others like. Um, wait. Did they just disappear? No, here. Pipe joints. This pipe joints and gears. The gear is really cool. So you have this gear and you have this uh, parameter just like uh, if you use Spreadshop or animation nodes. You can definitely recreate this gear in uh, Spreadshop. Uh, this is like a once-off thing I think. You, you can still adjust the parameter while this uh, panel is still open. But once you're finished and you move to the next operations, you you're gonna lose the ability to make changes. So let's call the crown. So okay, if I switch to other operations, so I lost that ability. But uh, that's um, with this um, extra mesh, you can have uh, also diamonds and honeycomb, teapot, let's use a teapot actually, yeah, it's nice, let's use a teapot for today, save this, switch to back to compositing, to spare chalk, okay, we're gonna use this teapot, um, let's use the objects in node, Get the selection, get the teapot. Now the teapot is uh, loaded in Spreadshop. Now let's uh, do randomized input vertices, for example. Just like the, the simplest example you can do in Spreadshop. Um, use a viewer draw, plug the vertices and the polygon. Move the original teapot to the side. Now now with this uh, single node, we can randomize the teapot like that. Very cool. Randomize the seed. That's a uh, one of the thing you can do. Uh, but that's a uh, that's basically a uh, too basic, too simple. Uh, but anyway, I wanna show you. Um, you can simply export this as a as a JSON, like a template, you are exporting the template. 
if I click on a export to GIS, copy it GIS URL to clipboard. So it's gonna store. It's kind of like exporting the the node three somewhere in the GIS. It's the nice thing is a GIS kind of storing all of this snippet of codes out there. Uh, I don't know if they are feasible. I think I think it's saving it in my in my GitHub. Anonymous, no three. Uh, I don't know. It's anonymous, so maybe they delete this at some point. But it's a. It creates the template for us. You can see if and okay. This is the objects expecting a tuple, and there's a randomized vertices with this value. Yeah, very interesting. Um, you can also write uh, your own, but you no, you don't want to do. You don't want to write it like this. It's a uh, basically it's for the template. So you can save it. You can also uh, you can um, export to GIS, but you can also zip it. Um, I think zip. Actually, uh, yeah, zip. Self blend. Um, I think this is actually saving the JSON. We don't want to zip it, just export, but it's, it says blend, but it's actually saving the the JSON, believe it or not. Save. See, it say save blah 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 dot JSON. Okay, it's just a maybe instead of blend, it should save, say JSON. Okay, so what else we can do? So instead of uh, randomizing input vertices we want to create maybe we want to create our own setup that's more robust and for that we want to use like a vector noise maybe this is one of the nodes that you will use eventually if I just plug in the vertices into the noise we get something like this it's kind of what's going on you know but with a um, vector noise function here, basically um, we're providing some points and um, the noise is going to do something to the points. The better way to do it is to use the vector math operations and we're going to use add. So the original plug into that and then this noise plug into that guy and the result should be just a teapot but being uh, pushed by the noise. The noise can be a uh, scalar, it's a one di one dimensional or vector which is three dimensional and you have all these options Voronoi, uh, Perlin, all sort of stuff. Okay, um, if we want more control of this uh, we can use um, multiplication I think vector math vector math again and multiply scalar plug that in there we need a float value to control the strength of the noise so now we can control the noise. So by default, it's, uh, it's pretty strong. If you give just a little bit, it looks uh, kind of nice. And it, now, if you want to kind of uh, kind of move the noise, we can use another vector map. Vector map, and just. Uh, Plug it in here. Vector in. Now, uh, actually, this should be uh, add. So now, I can kind of uh, offset the noise in y, in the y axis or in the x axis on the z axis. Doesn't matter. Uh, whatever you like. We can use time for that frame info and plug this in there now let's have a look at the result so it's looking like that 
maybe the effects a little bit too fast. Let's use math. And this should be like a multiplier. Give it a smaller value, 0.1. Now it's kind of like a smoother kind of noise passing through the teapot. So that's a that's also pretty basic. I think I've done this a couple of times. Uh, not too particularly interesting, but again, I will uh, I will save it. Export uh, export this thing as um, noise deformer. Save noise deformer dot json. I'm gonna save this. Save it again, and I'll open a, open a new empty um, Blender files, and I'll go to compositing, turn on spread chart, and I will try importing the JSON. Import um, here. Go to the desktop. Get noise deformer. Just load it, and boom, we have all the setups ready for us. Very very handy, um, and the advantage of using this instead of a um, file append is that we can perhaps we have like a, like a bigger node tree and we, we just want to load this snippet of codes. We can do that quite easily. Get selection and update. Should be seeing something. I'm not seeing anything with get selection update it. Oh, there you go. Uh, I have to update it. I have to kind of scrub to update the, the thing. Okay, cool. Um, save this as pit stop 4. Maybe I want to continue with this and expand with the metric stuff. And with this, I will use the matrix, actually, uh, MK2 viewer bmesh MK2. So this is gonna output a real object. Put that in, plug the input there, hide our thing. So this is the original object. I will put it in a different layer. This is a um, spread of generated objects, only one of them. I want to show you something that I think I I kind of missed it to mention. This node, Fever BMS MK2, can generate objects that uh, merge. I rarely do that. Normally, I have to kind of join the mess and apply mess, etc. But that single button does the job for us. I'll, I'll show it to you what what it does. So if we have like a plane, like a grid, and we plug into the location and now increase the number. So we have a bunch of these objects. What merge does actually it's merging all the objects into into a single mesh. If I turn that off, each mesh is separate. Okay, that's a something uh, you need to be aware of. Let's save this. So at the moment we have how many objects? One, two, three, four, six, and five. Thirty objects. Um, what if we want to have a different variation? At the moment they are all the same. The noise generate the same uh, result for each one of these. Let's see. There, are, there are many ways to do this. Uh, maybe if I merge this guy and can I load it in here? No, we don't need to load it in there. What I'm gonna do is maybe load the JSON thing again. Load the template here. And get the noise deformer 
once again and move it to the side and delete that delete this guy we have this object right here and you wanna get the mesh object mesh mesh filter I think it's not a mesh filter that I need B mesh in maybe not maybe B mesh out Let's see B mesh out so for this B mesh list I wonder if there is a way to output extend matrix some shade random name material huh actually I, I want to kind of grab these objects and reuse the noise I, I was wondering if I can just do that I never actually thought about that maybe let me think BMS in BMS out object ID is interesting I never use it but maybe next triangulate script formula network objects in mk2 mesh join should be something with the object No, I think I guess we have to do it like this so we grab that object and plug this in there and plug the polygon in there show the result plug the vertices in there now we have our thingy <coughs> but this is also applying the same I think it's the same noise for all of this which is a little bit weird no I think they are quite different um, few top few no they are all different um, let me increase the strength see they are all a uh, different kind of mesh although they are quite similar maybe instead of using standard Perlin use a Voronoi or cell noise increase the strength okay so we can do it like this so this is um so this one generate one cube with a noise if we output the whole thing again and run the same process we get something like that so it's a uh, we can definitely run this and update it yeah so that's a uh, that's one way we can approach this and we can also save this again export export this uh, no um, yeah that's correct noise deformer save so we can continue on and on and generate no tree like that I think we can also do it in a way that we can um, apply the noise directly to this guy if I'm not wrong it's uh, something to do with the seed So currently we have 80 
80 of these objects. Let's uh, reduce that to four, just four. Okay. The way to do it, I think I did it in the previous video. List repeater, I think is the key to do that. List repeater, uh, unwrap. Do it the same thing. Give it four. Give it four here. And up, update it. Uh, no, they're still the same. Um, maybe because the noise doesn't have seed. Vector noise need a maybe maybe vector noise need an update. Uh, let's see how can we randomize this guy. Metrics apply or it's a randomized input for the sys has the seed, but we don't want that. We want vector noise. Um, vector math multiply color vector cell noise. No. Hmm. Tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Um, <coughs> I have a feeling that we can actually randomize this this uh, this guy. Uh, maybe range float and give a count of four and plug this in there. Uh, step. No, that doesn't quite work. Maybe scalar. No. Vector. Yeah, I think. No, we cannot do it like that unless we put the noise. Unless we apply the matrix first, of course. Because it's like two operations. Uh, again, so the right way to do it is just like before. Maybe unless there is a another node with a seed that we can use. Um, the way we do it is pretty much like before. Let's grab the JSON, import, wait a couple of seconds, and we have our thingy. Oh yeah, I forgot we have a teapot. Teapot, um, extra object, already loaded. Mesh, um, gears, toes, extra diamond, simple star, honeycomb, teapot. Teapot, we have all kind of teapot, I think. Resolution, oh, okay, very low resolution. Let's use lowest teapot and grab our teapot and let's see. It's a good idea, I think, to keep the, the fewer nodes. Fewer node. Fewer draw node. Uh, don't crash. Okay, nice. Okay, cool. It's a good idea to keep this guy just in case. It's kind of like a way to. Um, it's kind of like a pit stop, you know, like a. Like a preview for the next process. So definitely keep this guy whenever you want to see. Uh, Kind of like a you might have like a really big process and you want to have you, you should know okay this is the one process and then it's gonna take the next process hide um, let's hide this guy and this is what we get at the moment 
a little bit heavy, um, lots of vertices. Hide the vertices, hide the edges. Turn on the shading. So that's what we got. Random. It's the teapot with a random noise applied. That's the original. Okay. Um, we can bake it. And let's have a look. And control three and they are all slightly different. Okay, cool. That's um just a uh, that's just like um the basics of um how you would like um to install spread chalk and animation nodes into Blender. Um, it's all basic stuff, and I just in this live noting, I really just want to talk about the, the the way you can use templates. And so far, spread chalk seems pretty stable. I think um, the crashing um, previously that happens might be related to Blender itself. Blender 2.78. This is 2.78a, and this is this should fix a lot of bugs and crashing and weirdness. Okay, so yeah, uh, there you go. That's uh, that's end up being being a quite long video, but I talk quite a lot. Um, if this is the first time you use Blender, um, learn Blender from scratch. It's a lot of fun, and if you want to like uh, follow my live noting video. This is, should be your first video, and you now should learn how to install, install the the thingy, and use the template. Um, if you wanna go back to the basic, just watch my previous video, live noting videos. Um, okay. Um, thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you in the next 